fascinating. Initially, Scott, I can't lie, when the TMZ information... Gannon, I promise this is the last time I'm going to ask you. I'm just freaked out, okay? Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? He did it. Okay, he promised. He promised. On purpose. Pinky promise. Pinky. Okay, all right, so, listen. Listen. We're, all right, um, we're going to have to sell stuff to fix it. Okay, so okay. we figure out what we got to sell. We can sell the sofa. We can sell whatever, because we got to get it fixed. So, lady, don't be mad at us and kick us out of the house. Okay, you got it. You are. I am Tisha Stout, which is Gannon's stepmother. Uh. You've been a part of the investigation since the very first time. You were the last person to see him. Is that right? Correct. Uh, what What did you see when you last saw him? Well, I'm not allowed to talk about anything with the case. I would more so be willing to talk about how the community needs to have faith and continue to work together and not make these false accusations, like the things that have been said that I've disappeared from the community. I haven't been there to help, but there's lots of reasons behind that. Uh, reasons like death threats, right? Right. Death threats are one of them. My family's getting lots of death threats. We counted over 20 some death threats already. Um, two, my husband's ex-wife is living in our home and of course I'm not coming home to do these things and to help with the family when I was kind of like told I couldn't. Um, and then many other things that happened with the El Paso County Police Department, you know, and in doing the investigation I was told I wasn't complying. And uh, could I elaborate on that? Please do. Yes. So, I asked for an attorney during the interview uh, and I was denied that by them. I was held because they were blocking the door and I was told I couldn't leave and that if I would have touched them they would have probably you know said I still wasn't complying or said I was you know trying to run away or something but during the interview I asked several times could I stop the interview could I get an attorney could I stop the interview could I get an attorney I was denied I was told I couldn't get nothing to drink I couldn't go to the bathroom I mean it was continuously that my constitutional rights were violated. And that's why you say that they said then you weren't cooperating with the investigation. That's why they said I wasn't cooperating at that time, correct. And why did you ask for an attorney at the time? Well, I asked for an attorney at the time because there was one individual, there was two really good detectives, mm -hmm. and so I'm not you know, going to talk bad about detectives, but the tactics they started to get when I would answer questions, they try to, you know, they're detectives, they're supposed to twist, the one main goal is to find Gannon. But during that time, some of those things made me feel uncomfortable the way they were saying things. So I immediately stopped and felt like, felt like an attorney would help me with some of the vocabulary and things like that that I needed help with and understanding some of the things that they were asking. I'm going to shift gears to what has become a huge online presence of people right. obviously trying to do the right thing, mm -hmm. help find Gannon. But at the same time, sometimes it just feels like rumor mongering. Have you seen any of those comments yourself? We have. And see, that's one of the main things we haven't uh, been around in the public eye because we did, I didn't want to expose my family to it if all these things were going on. You know, there was comments about Gannon getting pushed off the hike and there was comments about this and that's just not true. I took care of Gannon for the last two years in our home because his mother didn't want to do it. And I would never, never, ever hurt this child. And I know there's some questions out there about, okay, so tell me what happens. That's up to the investigations when they end up letting you guys know, but I've cooperated with them, even to the point that we were held with a gun and my daughter, a 17 year old who serves our country in the United States Air Force, who has never committed a crime or done anything wrong in her life, was put in handcuffs over the keys that was in her purse so they could take her car. And they weren't in there? They weren't even in her car, I mean in her purse. And they you, were in my pocket. You originally didn't even know it was the uh, law enforcement officer? I didn't know it was a law enforcement officer because when he came out, I guess he was putting his jacket on and it, it wasn't necessarily his fault. He was adjusting and happened to catch me. But I saw the gun and I panicked originally and kind of thought, oh gosh, I got the, like, who is this guy? And then once I realized it was the sheriff's office, I was totally okay, but they still had a gun and told me they were going to shoot me. But I was really concerned about my daughter asking why she was being detained in handcuffs and things like that when that shouldn't even happen for a child. That shouldn't happen for someone who was standing inside of a store shopping because we couldn't have any clothes because all of our clothes were here. If we came here and got clothes, you know, we would be harassed. So she went to purchase some underwear and things like that and was putting the handcuffs in the store, you know, and then brought out with men with guns. And there's that, that's just not OK. You know, they could have approached me and said, hi, I'm with El Paso County. Can I please get this instead of the way that it happened? I'm just going to check your chat. Doing great. 
want to make sure that we're still going to recording, still can hear you okay. Okay, yeah, sounds like we're good. Every once in a while my mic will be out and I want to make sure that's not going to happen here. Okay. I, I should try and clarify here. Not necessarily crime rates, but the way that people are reacting online to rumors about you with the search. Oh, oh yes, wow. The rumors have gotten so bad. Uh, I pretty much have been told at least 10 different ways that these people have these conspiracy theories. I guess they watch a lot of law shows and maybe they have all these theories on how um, Gannon is dead. And that's what they're saying. So I'm like, why are you saying Gannon is dead? He is not dead. We are going to find Gannon. And that's the main goal that we all have, my family has. Just because you haven't seen us, we have that same goal. And we've been out searching. My aunt has been out searching. My family has been out searching. We all have been doing that together so that we could protect each other. How does it feel when not only you have a lost child who you are in care of, but then people blaming you for that child not being there? You know, I, I'm just ready for Gannon to come home. Most importantly for him to see his family, but second, I am going to be so ecstatic when I'm able to say to people that I hope they have a really sincere apology for all these theories that have came out online, for all the things they said that I have done or people have done. And I just want everyone to know that we're going to find Gannon, and I love him so much. I've helped taking care of him for so long. Can you talk to me a little bit about him? I don't know him. Gannon is so kind and he loves to play video games. That's one of his favorite things. He loves Sonic and Mario and you know, he's always helpful and I, he was always so helpful with the dogs around the house and we have two little cute dogs and he was always like a person I could say, Gannon, can you go do this? And he would do it right away. You know, sometimes with kids we have to remind them and things like that and that's okay, but he was so sweet and able to help anyone. He could notice when you're sick and say, are you okay? And such a kind heart. Um, I know you just said that you can't say anything about the investigation, so you can just say so again if you can't answer this, but is there anything we can hear about the hike? Was there a hike? We don't, that just seems like rumors right now. You know what? Um, could we bring, uh, my daughter up here? Cause she can, she can go and say that, you know, she came home from work after the hike and she can verify that Gannon was at our home. Okay. Yeah. That's fine with me. And if she doesn't want to, that's okay, but you're allowed that's to fine. ask her. Sounding okay so far? Yes. I need Harley. I need Harley. Because they want you to verify was Gannon at home after the hike. Because you didn't go to the hike, but you came home from work. Hmm? Do you want me to just say yes? No, just answer the question. Yes, you, you came home from work and you, ver you can verify Gannon was at home. Yeah. I told her she didn't have to be too in-depth because she is still... You know a child but i want to make sure that someone knows that there's another person to verify that gannon sure does she need to hold this no yes so i came home later that evening i was at work and i can verify that he was there that night so there there was a hike that you guys went on but then you guys came home yes where'd you guys go hiking garden of the gods oh yes okay um i guess when and then we ate burger king afterwards so you know <laughs> there you go yeah um and then it just was, I'm going to go to play at a friend's house. And then it was just, uh, I'm off to go to play at a friend's house. Unfortunately, I'm not able to like comment on that anymore. And for that reason, is because some things have been turned and twisted. And, you know, that was one of those stories you were talking about where people say things. Um, we had to hear things like who would let their child go out at dark and, and things like that. And that, and that's just why I don't want to answer that. Um, if I had to give I'm not gonna say that part. That's okay. Never mind. That's right. I could take that out. I understand that it, it gets tricky with yeah. actual stuff. Do you feel like I asked you what I need to? Do you feel like this is gonna help kind of turn the tide of what feels like a witch hunt, in my opinion? I hope. Is am I on camera? Now? You are okay. still okay. Um, I think that a lot of people can see that I'm not missing and see that I am being cooperative and but to me it's okay that they think those things because my the way someone thinks about me I don't have a problem with that my main thing is I would never want someone to think that I would hurt Gannon or any of the children in our home because that's just not the case I've spent my whole entire life working so hard in education um, there was even things online that was talking about my education license and I shouldn't even be a teacher and they just didn't know that like we moved on a military move and I didn't finish out my contract so I gave up my license in that state 
Um, it had nothing to do with any criminal activity, you know, or any of those things. And it just got blown out of proportion on my professional status, you know. And Do you feel like these are just internet detectives who think they know what they're doing? It definitely is. And, you know, here's the thing that kind of saddens me. It's like, if you're going to talk about someone like that and have a witch hunt out for them, why would you even care, like, about doing those things? Because this is a child. You're telling me that you're just as mean. You're just as hateful to talk about someone else like that. That's how I feel. Like, we just should not. We should all come together and wait until the end and, and see what happens because Gannon's going to come home. Any message for Gannon? The message for Gannon I have is, Gannon, when you get here, you'll be able to truly tell what happened. And then I really hope I get a sincere apology from everyone who has made all those things, especially from my husband. We just wanted to add a message to Gannon from my family, is that we love you and miss you. And we hope that you come home soon. And Gannon, I can't wait till you can come home and let everyone know that you're okay. We love you. How do I describe my G-Man, my Gannon? Gannon's my hero. I love him so much. He's not only my hero, he has multiple people that call him his hero as well. He has so many family members that just look up to him at such a small age. He's full of life. He's happy. He's energetic. He loves sports. He loves Sonic. He loves going outside, playing with his friends, his sister, his neighbor, especially Brayden. Um, this neighborhood basically gives you a true example of who my son is. Everybody coming together. All the smiles that people have. This is why I have hope, because I feel it. This is Gannon truly speaking to our community. Gannon, is, he loves blue. He loves Sonic. He's into coding. He loves riding his bicycle with his sister. And I know that he's missing that right now. He holds his job as being Big Bubba, very important. And for him not to be able to talk to his sisters has to be hurting him. This week has been awful. It's been more than a roller coaster ride. It's been more than emotional mess. I don't even have answers for my feelings other than I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I will never hear his voice, that I will never hear him run and say, Mommy! And I'll never hear those corny jokes that he always tell every single day. He has to tell me a joke. He looks forward to telling me something silly. And I'm afraid that I may never see that again or hear it. I don't want to believe that because that means that I'm giving up hope and I'm not giving up hope because my son is full of hope. So I'm urging anyone that has any leads, credible leads, if you're too afraid because you know something, a kid just doesn't disappear and no one sees him. That's doesn't, it's not how this works. So if you have anything that's credible, if you're afraid, don't worry about it. Imagine my son, how afraid he is. Imagine how afraid Gannon is. So please call. Please write. If you need to have someone else to do it for you, please do. Because my son deserves to be here. He deserves to be here. Please call the El Paso Sheriff's County and let them know. And I thank you guys, the community, for what you've done, because this is Gannon. This is who he is. And I thank you guys so much. When Gannon was born, he weighed only one pound and six ounces, and even today he's still our miracle child. He still is. And such a happy child and he, he just brings life to every party he his smile even today is keeping us going his infectious smile brings me joy every time I think about it the past eight days have been uh, as Landon said a roller coaster of emotions sometimes we jump in for joy because we get an information that we might think is a break in the case and and then the next minute we get in for you know we see something or get information that just breaks our heart into a million pieces again but through all this, just know that your thoughts and your prayers and your messages, keep them coming because even if we don't respond, we are receiving them. And that has given us strength to get through this. And I do want to say I'm so proud of, of Lena, my little baby girl here, and of Landon, you know, my children's mother. They've been so strong through this, stronger than I would have ever thought that I, that I could have ever been. And I'm getting strength from them as well. As I said, please keep sending your thoughts and your prayers 
because we are receiving them. And if you have any information, any information at all that could help, please reach out to the El Paso County Sheriff's Office with only credible information, but any information that you think may help. Thank you so much. Your turn, baby. I love you, Baba. I'm Landon Hyatt, Gannon's mom, and I encourage you guys, I know many of you mothers and fathers, I encourage you just to seek, find him. I'm so thankful for all the outpouring help that this case has brought. My son is a very loving kid. He wouldn't want harm on anybody at all. And it's so hard to just think, why is this happening to him? I have no clue, but my kid deserves to come home. My kid has a purpose. My kid has a life, and it's important to me and it's important to everybody that's standing in this room. Gannon, Bubba, little man, mommy's hero, wherever you're at, mommy and daddy's here. And we're begging and pleading for you to come home. I know that's your biggest wish, is to see mommy and daddy standing here. We're here, Bubba. We're here for you, and I can't wait till you're found, because I have hope that you are going to be found. You are my hero. You are the reason why I have life. He's so special to me. I don't think many people can understand. My child was a one pound, six ounce baby. He had a 10% chance of survival. If he survived, he would be profoundly disabled. None of that is accurate. He's gifted and talented. Do anything for anybody. So I'm begging, I'm pleading. If anybody has any type of lead, Put yourself in my situation. Ask yourself, what would you do? My savior is a great savior. And I know I have hope and that my son's gonna be here. I'm thankful for the churches, the pastors, the outpouring support from this community, from Albert's military, family, everybody, the detectives. I had, it was you that was sitting at the table and you told me that 90% success rate, and you told me that I'm gonna find Gannon. I believe that. It's the first time I had hope since I got that call on Monday. I have hope. So please have hope with me. I'm begging, bring my baby home. Bubba, I love you. Mommy loves you so much, Nova loves you. Lena loves you. This room is filled with people that love you and this community loves you too. So please come home, baby, please come home. Yeah, I'd like to reiterate what Layden said that um, well, well, what an incredible community we have. I mean, everybody in here in, in a team, incredible team that, um, uh, yeah, I came out my front door, I think it was Tuesday, and there was 300 people out there searching my neighborhood. They blew, blew me away. So, so thank you, everyone. Thank you. Again, and Daddy loves you so much. Please come home. Thank you for coming today. We thank you for your patience as we work diligently. Sheriff Bill Elder, Lieutenant Mitch Mahalko, FBI Denver Division Special Agent in Charge, Dean Phillips, District Attorney Dan May, and Senior Deputy District Attorney Michael Allen. We will not be taking any questions at the conclusion of the
press conference. However, I will be reading a statement from Gannon's father, Al. Landon may, may not speak. Please respect the family's request for privacy as they begin to absorb and process the devastating news they have received today. Sheriff Elder. Thanks, Jackie. Um, welcome, everybody. Today marks five weeks since the investigation into the disappearance of Gannon Stout. We're holding the press conference to update you on some significant developments. While we've yet to locate Gallant, Gannon, this morning, just after 8 o'clock a.m. East Coast time, Letitia Stout was taken into custody in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, without incident by law enforcement officers from this, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, the Denver and Columbia Divisions of the FBI, the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina Police Department, the Horry County, South Carolina Police Department, and Sheriff's Office. <coughs> Letitia will be held without bond in the J. Reuben Long Detention Center in Horry County, South Carolina, where she, where she will remain until she's extradited back to Colorado Springs on the following charges. Charge one, murder in the first degree of a child under 12 years of age by a person in a position of trust. Child abuse resulting in death. Tampering with a deceased human body and tampering with physical evidence. I cannot stress enough what a difficult time this has been for Gannon's family. Like Jackie said, they've provided a written statement, but they will not, and, and they won't be providing any interviews at this time, and I ask that you protect their privacy. This has been a rapidly devol developing and highly complex investigation, and it underscores the importance of teamwork in the law enforcement agents in our community. While our hope is always that tragic cases like this never happen. It is precisely why the extremely close relationships we enjoy with our local, state, and national law enforcement partners becomes the most important. The list of people from around the country that have worked many, many long hours and invested themselves so deeply in, is long and impressive. I offer my sincere thanks to each and every one of you for all that you've done in the investigative efforts so far. The safety of the citizens of this community is the top priority to all of us standing before you today. We'd like to thank the thousands of members of this community for your compassion, your kindness, and your thoughtfulness, your generosity, and your support while we've taken on the tireless search efforts over the past five weeks. On behalf of the Sheriff's Office, all of the investigators, the staff, the volunteers involved in this investigation from all over the United States, we would like to express our deepest sympathies to Gannon's family and friends. There is no way to express the depth of our sympathy and our hearts break for you. But I make this promise. This team will continue its work. These partners will remain steadfast and diligent until the conclusion and final prosecution of this case. We will not stop, and this investigation has only begun. Letitia's arrest photograph will be made available to the media as soon as we can following the press conference. Jackie will have the details. And now I will turn this, the microphone over to Lieutenant Mitch Mahalko. Good afternoon. We will, we will not be going into detail about the information in the investigation which ultimately resulted in the arrest of Letitia. But I can tell you that this has been a methodical and time-consuming multi-state operation with investigators working nearly around the clock to find Gannon. There have been thousands of hours of investigation and search efforts. This includes large-scale searches in addition to small, specific searches with drones, horses, canines, and other resources. While we have not yet found Gannon, information has been developed that is helping us narrow our search. As you can see from the arrest, sadly, we do not believe Gannon is alive. Our work is only just beginning, and you will continue to see many law enforcement officials in El Paso County over the coming weeks and possibly months as we continue our relentless pursuit of justice for Gannon and his family. 
On behalf of the investigators and staff involved in this investigation, we would like to express our deepest sympathies to the family and the friends of Gannon. The death of a child is something no parent should ever have to endure. This case has not just been an investigation for us. This case has become very personal and will forever remain in our hearts. We will continue to work closely with the 4th Judicial District Attorney's Office, the FBI, and other partners to the conclusion of this investigation. At this time, I'd like to turn this over to FBI Denver Division Special Agent in Charge, Dean Phillips. Thank you for being here today. On behalf of the men and women of the FBI, all the special agents, investigative analysts, support staff, and our task force officers, we express our deepest condolences to the family, the friends, and the loved ones of Gannon Staunch. <clears throat> to the press, I also ask that you give the family space and time in order to process the information that they're dealing with now. To the community, thank you for your patience and understanding, for your assistance, and for the support you've provided to the law enforcement community as we've worked through this investigation. The law enforcement community, I want to recognize in particular the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, the Colorado Springs Police Department, the uh, uh, Douglas, County Police, uh, Douglas County Sheriff's Office, our partners, our task force partners in Pueblo, the Pueblo uh, PD, Pueblo County Sheriff's Office, and the Colorado State Patrol. All of these agencies have worked tirelessly and seamlessly together throughout this investigation. Although this is not the outcome for which we had hoped, we uh, continue to work this aggressively and we will continue to work it through to the end. As far as the FBI is concerned, we brought significant resources to bear to include agents, special agents, investigative analysts, technical support, evidence response teams, and behavioral analysis unit support. But we are not done. We will be here with our partners to the end. We will continue to help law enforcement and the prosecutors see this to the very end. And know this, when it comes to the loss of a child, the FBI will always bring all available and logical resources to bear to help our law enforcement partners when called. We will answer the call. To the community, I want to tell you uh, that at this point, all the evidence points to uh, Gannon's disappearance being the result of foul play. But we have no reason to believe that there is any information or intelligence indicating a threat to other children in the community. Thank you very much. This is not the outcome that anybody here wanted. We wish today as we were standing here that we had little Gannon with us to be able to present to our community still alive and doing well. Unfortunately, that's not the situation. As you've heard, an arrest warrant was issued for first degree murder of Gannon in this case. Unfortunately, we've had to get to know the family now uh, as part of our prosecution family. And they'll be with us for the next many months going forward. It's an unfortunate thing that we are here today. I do want to thank all those who've been involved. The FBI has been amazing. John Cronin, who's the special agent in charge here in Colorado Springs, has spent literally his team 24-7 for weeks across this country. We could not have done this without their support. Bill Elder's team has been fabulous in terms of their work, working tirelessly again 24-7 for many weeks, hoping we would find Gannon. Unfortunately, we are not. Uh, Colorado Springs Police Department, Kevin Clark, came over, and it's been amazing the work that he has done, which I understand he may even be re get a special recognition from the FBI in terms of what he's done uh, on this case. My lead prosecutor on this case has been Michael Allen. He will continue to be the lead prosecutor throughout this case. And with that, I'd like to introduce him to fill you in on some of the things we expect going forward. I want to let everybody know that the affidavit in this case supporting the arrest warrant remains sealed. We do understand why this case has drawn the attention it has from across our community our, and also across our country. But we want to do everything we can to make sure we achieve justice for Gannon. 
So we're not going to talk about the facts of the case going forward. We want to make sure that we protect these criminal proceedings. Anytime, anytime a child goes missing, um, it's natural for people to want to help out. And we encourage people, if you have credible tips, to still report those tips to the Sheriff's Department. We are going to continue this investigation. And really, it's a two-pronged investigation at this point, or process, I should say. One, we still want to bring Gannon home so that he can have a proper burial and his family can achieve the closure that they need. But we also want to hold the person um, that we are charging, Letitia Stouck, accountable for what she did in this case. She has been arrested on the following charges. Murder in the first degree, child under 12 by a person in position of trust. That is a class one felony and carries a potential penalty of life in prison without parole. The other charges are child abuse resulting in death, tampering with the deceased body, and tampering with physical evidence. The extradition process is where we are now. Uh, we will proceed uh, until we get Letitia back here to face formal filing of charges, which will be sometime in the coming days. We do have a team of folks in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina right now, two prosecutors from our office, FBI agents, and members of the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. They are collecting evidence even in South Carolina as we speak, and that will continue until they exhaust that effort. Uh, I do want to add, too, that uh, all defendants, Letitia included, are innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. That will be the case. It's our burden to prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. We are confident that we'll be able to do that. But because we have that burden and we want to protect these proceedings, we won't be commenting again on the facts of this case. Thank you very much. Really, I'm not in the correct mindset to be even standing up here, but if I had to say one thing, that when he said Gannon is no longer with us, I'd have to say Gannon is with us. After the stories of people from all over the world, he's not only my hero now, he's the world's hero. So I think the community, the positive support from a state that I've never visited other than two or three times, I'm astounded by the amount of love that's not come from me. It's came from my boy. And never thought I'd be standing here. It's a nightmare. I've had to put trust in the people I don't know. Today, I got the worst news and the best news. Obviously, we know what the worst news is, but the best news is, is that justice will be served. And I'll make sure that justice is served because my boy did not deserve any of this that has happened to him. So I urge media one more time just to hold off on questions until we know that this person, the stepmom that I even trusted, that she will pay 100% for this heinous thing she done. And I know that that's going to be do, will be done. So I ask you guys, I beg and plead, if, you, if you've known or if you see this story, all of you have seen this story, please hold that very close to you. Because I want to live this earth knowing that justice was served for my boy. And I know that you've seen pictures. You've seen stories. You've seen my little man. He is truly my hero. And I'm gladly giving that to you guys too, that he can be your hero. I've heard stories of people that have not prayed in years that have finally fell on their knees to pray. And I know where my son's at, without a shadow of a doubt. So many families have been brought closer together because of this. I know my boy is special, and I've told my people and my family <clears throat> and friends that Gannon has a testimony, that Gannon has a story. He's special. And this is his story. So make that story magnificent who my child is and I'm putting my trust into you guys to do that so thank you for allowing Gannon to be your hero and sharing him with us so now I'm going to read a statement from Al Gannon's dad in a moment on September 29, 2008, my heart stopped as my baby boy entered this world way too early, weighing only one pound, six ounces. His infectious smile and constant laughter 
made an impact on every single person he's ever met. Although I miss the years, I miss the years when he was learning to walk, learning to talk, and he had welcomed his little sissy home from the hospital. I've been looking forward to his teenage years and the fun we had ahead of us as he became a young man. In a moment, on March 2nd, 2020, my heart stopped again when, with what we have heard up to this point. My little boy is not coming home. We will never play Nintendo again. No more Taco Tuesdays. No more smooth-looking haircuts. No more Big Bubba for my Lena, and no more G-Man for the world. The person who committed this heinous, horrible crime is one that I gave more to anyone else on this planet, and that is a burden that I will carry with me for a very long time. But the God I believe in is the owner and decider of justice and vengeance. Only he can repay. Although I am selfish and want my baby boy here, now and forever, how can I question God for bringing Gannon home to him? Because Gannon believed in God, and I will never stop believing. Thank you to the El Paso County Sheriff's Office and the FBI for the thousands of hours it took to uncover the truth as we know it. And may they stay strong and focused as they move forward. The mugshot for Leticia will be available on our social media platforms as soon as she is formally booked into the Horry County Sheriff's Office detention facility. I do have press packets available for the media, which will be available at the conclusion of the press conference. Uh, as Senior District Attorney Michael Allen said, all investigation questions should be directed to the District Attorney's Office. All search effort information will continue to come from the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. Right now, I'd like to take the time to thank the media for your constant coverage and not letting this nation forget Gannon. Our work is not done. Let's continue to work together to find him. Thank you for coming. Is this, is this Miss uh, Staunch? Staunch? Yeah. I knew whichever way I went, I'd be wrong. But uh, okay, uh, I don't know how much you know about the extradition proceeding. Um, do you know anything about extradition? Well, you're going to learn. Um, this morning, you have a decision to make. You can either waive extradition and the uh, state of Colorado has uh, 20 days to come get you, which, to be quite honest about it, under the facts of this particular situation, I have a feeling it'd be much shorter than that. But um, <clears throat> anyway, you have 20, they'll have 20 days to come get you, or you can fight extradition. Fighting extradition means that, and this is a guesstimate on my part, that it would be about maybe 90 days from now, the Attorney General from the state of South Carolina would hold a uh, extradition hearing where he has to prove two things that you are Miss St uh, Staunch Stouch Stouch Miss Stouch and that you are wanted for a felony in the state of Colorado it's not a very high bar for him to jump over but that is the standard in a in a uh, extradition hearing um, so my question to you is, do you want to waive extradition or do you want to uh, fight extradition? Um, so when you said something about fighting it, I have to do what now? Well, you don't have to do anything. You just uh, have to sit, sit until the uh, um, hearing comes up. But uh, um, otherwise, the state of, uh, state of uh, Colorado has, if you waive extradition, they have 20 days to come get you. I would be surprised if they weren't already in the air, but that's just me. I have no factual basis for that, but I, I've just... Uh, uh, they were here yesterday. That's who actually came. Oh, okay. 
So yeah, what you I, want to do, young lady? You want to uh, waive extradition or you want to fight? So there's an hearing here. What does that mean? They decide to determine what? If the hearing is here, what does that decide? It just decides whether, whether you go back to Colorado or not. Well, I've still never been given the opportunity, like, since the beginning, to even call my attorney to even talk to him about any mm -hmm. of these things. Well, where is your attorney? Well, I need to call my friend Laura, who has the attorney, but I was told yesterday that someone was going to do that, but they never did. Okay. Last since yesterday, but I called an attorney. Well, I, it doesn't matter either way to me, because I'm just asking the question. I don't care what the answers are. If if you waive extradition, I will sign the extradition order, and they'll bring it back there for you to consent to. If you fight extradition, then they'll just have an extradition hearing sometime in the future. And uh, um, the problem with, with fighting extradition is that <clears throat> the time you spend sitting waiting for the extradition hearing is uh, always considered to be your time not Colorado or whatever the requesting state's time is. So you don't get any credit. It's like, I won't say wasting your time, but, and, and there are very few, this isn't legal advice, but I'll tell you, there's very few defenses to extradition. Um, but it's your choice. Oh, so you're saying it's not like a guarantee, it's just a hearing? It's just a hearing where they have to prove you are who you are and that you're wanted for a felony. Those are the two things they have to prove in an extradition hearing. That's all it, so I mean, if you if you are who you are and you're wanted for a felony in, in, in Colorado, it won't do much good fighting an extradition hearing. Oh, you're yes, saying they have to prove that. I see what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Yes. So you don't know. Okay, what you want to do, young lady? Um, so Colorado. Okay, well, I'll sign the extradition order, and uh, they'll bring it back for you to consent to. Now, of course, it wouldn't have mattered if you waived or not waived. When somebody's an extra, uh, somebody is a fugitive from one state, I don't let them be a fugitive from two states. So uh, uh, you, you, it's not like if you answered either way, it would make any difference as far as, as the hearing today goes, because I'm not going to set bond. Of course, I... With the charges that are involved, I couldn't set bond anyway, I don't think. Okay. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't run from you guys, so I don't have any trouble with you guys. I didn't even know anything until yesterday, so the date on that paper you have is wrong. Well, let, let, me, um, let me tell you something else, and I didn't go into all this. I didn't go into all this, uh, uh, but uh, once now that we've decided the uh, what we're going to do in this particular hearing, I, because of the charges you're charged with, as far as today's concerned, I don't believe I'd say too much more, okay? All right. They'll bring the order back to you to um, sign in a moment, All right. the consent to, okay? Okay. All right.